This is an NYY Sports Talk podcast presented to you by Baseballism, a premium lifestyle apparel brand inspired by America's pastime. Baseballism is America's brand. Now batting for the New York Yankees, the shortstop, number two. Welcome back. This is episode 102 of the NYYST podcast presented to you by Baseballism.com. I'm your host, Christian. As always, I'm joined by my co-host, Chris. You. And uh, he's got the sniffles. He's got the flu, bro. Got the flu. Guess who gave it to him? Yeah. I'm sure it'll hit me next because your son is a walking dumpster full of germs. That's really fucking nice, man. He's a 2-year-old kid and now he's a walking dumpster. Well, that's I, what he is to you, a walking dumpster. I walked in your house earlier and it looked like the kid was eating his own diaper. And you wonder why Stack Guy Rise is the godfather and not you, you know? Well, what does that say about your brother if you wouldn't make him the godfather? If he grows up to actually love you, my son, I'm actually going to save this episode and I'm going to play it for him when he's older. Okay. You say, remember Uncle Christian? Yeah? Boom. Called you a walking dumpster. Well, by the time he's old enough to understand everything, he's going to already understand that. So now he doesn't understand anything. He's two years old. He's okay. watching Baby Shark. So okay. I mean, his, his cognitive abilities aren't that of an adult, are they? Whatever. You call my son a walking dumpster. Well, he takes after his father. You are the, uh, the king of the I'm dumpster. I'm the king of the dumpster. You're the king of the dumpster, people. Maybe I am. At least I'm a good person. Yeah. And a person who would never call your two-year-old son a walking dumpster. Oh, I don't have a two-year-old son, so, so if I did, you can call him whatever you want. Okay, I can't wait. Can't wait. The thing, the difference between me and you is that you're sitting in your chair over there doing absolutely nothing about it, whereas I'd beat the shit out of you for talking about my child. Would you really? Huh? Would you really? You called my son a dumpster? <laughs> so wait, you think that if I acted the way you did, it would warrant... Uh, an ass kicking or an attempt to kick my ass. All right. Anyway, let's put let's um let's put the facts on the table here. Has my son nearly put you in the hospital? My son didn't do that to you. He no. had food poisoning. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. And what happened to the twelve out of sixteen people that were at your daughter's birthday party? They that just night? also so happened to get the stomach bug that night. Uh, purely coincidental. So you hold that you resent my son because of this? Absolutely. That's fucked up, man. It really is. Look what he did to everybody. You're a grown ass man and you're holding that over my son's head. Yeah. And if it wasn't, it wasn't just me. He brought that into, it would have gotten to the house anyway because my wife had it too. (coughs) Yeah. She got it from him, right? Yeah. Just keep blaming the two year old garbage dumpster, walking dumpster that, you know, two year old kid. Let me explain something. Kid's cute as as hell too. If somebody had a stomach bug and there were 16 people in a room, two maybe three tops would also get this stomach bug. He gave this stomach bug to 12 people. He's you know two what, years old, bro. You know what kind of super dumpster germs he has <laughs> to give a sickness to 12 people? 12 out of 16 people? Two and of which ended up in the hospital. Doesn't doesn't give you the, the right to call my kid a, a walking dumpster. But anyway, this isn't the How to Treat Your Kids podcast, you know? Screw the kids. I don't really care. I'm not that kind of dad. Yeah, clearly, because you don't give your kid proper hygiene, proper uh, cleaning your kid. Kid's got the flu, man. Yeah, now he's got something Tested else. positive for the flu. Yeah, why? Because he's a dumpster. Because he goes to daycare, and there's other kids that go- With other whose, dumpster kids. Whose parents care more about going to work than the well-being of their children- so they're like, yeah, little Timmy has a 105 fever, but you know what? He's okay. He can go because I need to go make money. And that's how the world works. And then that kid comes and hugs Jack, right? Or they're playing with di- little dinosaurs or something. Jack comes home, has the sniffles, and then next thing you know, he's not responding on the couch, looking at us like, like he's drunk, and he's got 106 fever. And we have to take him to the, to the urgent care. The emergency room. No, the urgent care. Uh, 106 fever, and that's all you The did? urgent care who uh, made my wife wait for uh, urgent two care. hours. First of all, this place is next to a friggin' Applebee, so how <laughs> <It's> important. <true>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really where... No one... Again, that's something a dumpster dad does. 
That was actually did you my, go, my dumpster wife who took him there. Did you go get so half? So you want to go get her? You did you want to go, go get half apps while you were waiting for the If I was there with her, I would have. I would have considered what we were going to do for dinner at that point. Well, since we referenced both of our wives in the open of this show, uh, I don't know if you got in trouble for it, but I kind of got yelled at. For not at. thanking them? We did not bring up the fact that we were supposed to thank them after episode 100. We were supposed to do it in episode 101. Which and then again, we missed 101. We so, missed doing it in 101. So yeah, I guess, now it's dead I at guess, this point. I right? guess at this point, episode 102, why I bother even thanking our wives? All right. Can we say two things real quick? Yeah. What's First that? thing is... If you're listening to this, if you're still listening to this, if you've gotten through the f- four minutes of bullshit that we've thrown around here and you're still listening, please stop. Give us a rating and review or do it when you're done listening to the show. It's extremely, extremely important. Please, 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 if you're listening in Apple Podcasts, iTunes, whatever, leave us a rating and review and subscribe to the show. Second thing I will say is I promise you we are go- going to get to Yankee Talk But the season still hasn't started, so there's not a lot. So we're going to bullshit a little bit here. The third thing I'm going to say is, before I thank my wife, I just want to say one thing. And I think we should get this off our chests and on the table here. When's the last time your wife's listened to the show? I mean, when we first started, they listened all the time, right? Well, how'd she know that we didn't thank uh, thank her on episode 100? Right. So that's what I'm saying. Until episode 100, when we became, you know, the guy, my husband, they, you know, interviewed John Sterling. I support them and love them. When's the last time your wife listened to the show? (sighs) Before episode 100. Uh, Probably episode 19. Right. Right. So, yes, I'm going to give a genuine thank you, but hey, maybe listen to the show more. I bet you if we don't tell them that we thank them on this show, they don't even know that we thank them. Absolutely not. Right. I'm not going to mention anything. Maybe you shouldn't. I'm not. Okay. So we'll see. But honestly, you want to thank first? I want to see how deep you're going to go with this thank you before I <laughs> go with the thank you. Is yeah, it just going to be like a thank you? Thank you. I love you. Or is it like going to be more like, wow, you put up with so much shit, so much time away from you Thank, kind of thank you. Okay. You said it. Okay. <laughs> No, seriously, my wife is, I have two kids, like, I don't just leave my wife, she would be happy about that probably if I left to do all this shit all the time. I don't just leave her, like, alone. I have two kids, and let me tell you something, call, what? what is, what's DIFUS now? They don't call it DIFUS anymore. Child Protective Services? Whatever, call, call the Child Protective Services for this, I don't care. My two kids are assholes. They're not like they're great kids. I love both of them. But like Jack is a dumpster. Jack last night. You want to know how many minutes I didn't see Jack yesterday? Maybe 30, 30 minutes of him, of me just getting peace and quiet yesterday. So they're not easy. And you know what? She, she does it. She's a trooper. She supports me. Thank you. I love you. That's your thank you. You're probably never even going to hear it, but thank you. And I love you. Okay. Is that it? You're not going to go into... What, what do you want me to say? You should thank you should thank your wife for being so supportive. Well, thank you, wife, for being so supportive. But also, you better start listening to the, to the show. Yeah, really. Like she, I mean, listen, every night I come into the bedroom, she's listening to somebody's podcast, and I'm like... Wait, are you kidding me? I'm like... She podcast cheats on you? Absolutely. Are you ki- See, now, I'll be honest. If my wife was a podcast fan... And she was listening to someone else's podcast. Is it another Yankee podcast? No. You would divorce her for that. Absolutely. 100%. I want to divorce her because she was listening to, what's, uh, Joe Sanagata? Joe, what's his name? Joe Sanagatu? What? That's, Joe Rogan? No. Some some cornball. Joe Sanagato or something. I don't know. It's Joe Santiago? Yeah. Who cares? Some, some spiky haired douchebag. Ugh. He, he got like I want to divorce her too right now. He got, he got like YouTube famous now. Oh, like, Joe Santiago, yeah, and he does all these like f- stupid videos. Like the people yeah, of yeah. Walmart, like yeah, yeah. Why don't why she's don't, had a crush on him for a long time? I actually know that for a fact. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you know, like how how much thanks should she get? Like she's not so, like, she's not laying in bed just, listening to my podcast. This is just such a bullshit. Thank you now at this point from you. I really hope she doesn't listen to this episode. You know, and when I come out to do the pod, she's like happy because then she gets to watch live PD uninterrupted. Right. 
I Right. That's what I'm saying. If my wife didn't have the asshole kids, both of them, both assholes, uh, she would love, I'm sure she would love her time that I took up here. You know? They could be worse about it, though. They could definitely be worse. Because we know people that are, like, not allowed to do anything. Anything. Most people. Kind of weird recording on a Friday night. I don't like it. Well, I'm actually excited to go back to our real recording day soon of a Sunday. Well, it was either this or we weren't doing it. It was just going to be you doing a show by yourself this You're going week. to pick up your pup tomorrow in the snow, hopefully blizzard. I can't believe it's barely snowed all winter long and I have to drive up to Maine or Rhode Island. I still don't know. My wife yells at Maine. me every, every You're going free, to Maine. Every time because we're finally getting getting a dog and my wife has to be difficult and have to get a breed that's only bred in friggin Maine. She couldn't get a dog that was bred 20 minutes from her house. I thought she doesn't like dogs. Why is she getting the control over what type of breed you're getting? (laughs) I wanted a dog, right? Oh, so that's what you, the compromise was she got to pick the breed? Yeah. Oh. Oh. And now they're calling for like snow all weekend. And you know, it's like, it's not even going to snow. You know, Maine snow is not like New Jersey snow. No, Maine snow is legit. If it snows in Maine, forget it. You might as well just, you might as well just, will you write a will at least and put me as the beneficiary of anything that you have? What the hell do I have? What do you want? I don't know. But if you die, I want to at least be excited about something. All right. Well, you can have, let's see. You can pick three items out of my room. Okay. Any three that you want. Okay. That's it. Deal. You get nothing else. Deal. You're definitely not getting $330 million. Oh, you have $330 million? I don't, but Bryce Harper does. Oh, someone else does, does? yeah. What a joke. Uh, Finally, finally, after 12 minutes of this podcast, we're going to talk about baseball. And finally, after what? Five months of the offseason. Five months too long, yeah. uh, Bryce Harper has... Signed the contract, 13 years, $330 million. Uh, so finally, him and Manny Machado are both <laughs> off the market. And uh, Bryce Harper is going to play in the city of brotherly love, which apparently he didn't love too much. But Oh, yeah, a guy loved. who didn't love it too much. But you want to know what I heard? He didn't want any opt-outs. How the hell could you not want any opt-outs? Seriously, you know, the whole turn, the whole phrase, like, he's only 26. That also plays to to him as well, not just the team locking him up. Why wouldn't he ask for an opt-out after four or five years? He's getting $25 million a year. In 13 years from now, that's going to play as like $18 million. I don't know. What would the opt-out be after three years, four years? And I'm sorry, but it's so stupid to me that these agents and the... What is it? An, is it a power trip? Is it is it all about their ego that they have a certain number in mind and they'll do anything it takes to, to get a contract that has that number on it? Like, why is the end result... Boris wanted to beat the total value of John Carl stands. Right, so it's all an ego thing. Like, like Scott Boris, I, in my opinion, yeah, he might be the greatest agent right now in baseball because of his name and whatever. He ruins his players' careers. It's just ridiculous to me. I mean, let's just be real for a second. Why does I don't know how you can say million, he ruins his players' careers when he gets them rich. Three hundred and thirty million should mean nothing. Should mean nothing. He's got a. He doesn't even have one of the top ten. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Seriously. Okay. Okay? Hold on. Let me get this thought out. Oh, Jesus. He does. Bryce Harper doesn't even have one of the top 10 AAVs in baseball. I know. He's like 11th. And he, but it was the total value of the contract. Right. That was important to them. That's what I'm saying. Why? Because think of it this way, right? Manny Machado. What was his contract? Say it to me. 10 for 300. Okay. Which average is what? 30. Okay. In 10 years from now. You are telling me that Manny Machado at age, what, 36? See. Okay. Can't get another three years totaling more than $30 million? No. Not at 36. He's not going to get a $30 million contract. Why? You mean mean the total value? Total value. Oh, yeah. I'm sure he probably could. Yeah. And at that time, like I'm saying now, that $30 million is a lot less than it is right now. 
So he definitely can. So why is that number so impressive that you're being locked up with no opt outs in a city that you have been vocal about not wanting to play for? Because now he has the highest total value contract in what the history of major league fucking baseball fucking do All that's right, well, what i'm gonna say well you, then know, you what? know what that was obviously important to i'm them. seriously i hate bryce harper i never liked him this just proves to me what a douchebag he is he is a complete douchebag i'm glad he's not on this team and i'm glad manny machado's not on this team either i really am but bryce harper has always rubbed me the wrong way at least machado's open about being a douche but like Bryce Harper just So if somebody's gonna Bryce be Bryce Harper's so cocky he just doesn't even realize what kind of a douchebag. So if he somebody's really gonna is. be a douchebag, you want them to be open about it. Like, yeah, I'm a I'm a fucking douchebag. No, I'm just saying at least and Manny then Machado like, you know what? owns it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like Machado comes out there and he's like, Yeah, I'm a douchebag. And you're like, Okay, I respect that. Right. I respect that about you. Right. But Bryce Harper is trying to be like a closet douchebag where it's like he's not like he doesn't even like that's just natural to him. Like, dude, does he I'm, not I'm know? So cool. Does he not know he's a douche? No, he knows he's a douche. But that's his. Are we that's, trying to set a world record for the amount of times we're going to say douchebag in one podcast? Maybe we already did. I'm. I don't care about him. I'm glad the Yankees didn't get him. Take your money. Go to Philadelphia with your scumbag. F- you know what? Perfect. Scummy fans for a scummy player. That's that's it. Now because we heard the Philadelphia fans are brutal. We heard after he signed that the Dodgers had a four year forty. That's bullshit. I'm no, telling it's you right not. Now. It's not bullshit. There's no way that's real. It Forty five million dollars a year. Yeah, it's true. That's ridiculous. Who confirmed it? A lot of people did. Why would you ever turn that down? Because he wa- I, he didn't want to go through free agency again in four years. Apparently. You're getting $45 million a year. 45 To go to a team that went to the World Series back-to-back years. $45 million a year. In four years, you're 30 years old. It might not have been exactly 45 It could have, Yeah, it was like I think 45. it was like four for 168 was a, was a contract. It was all. It was right around $45 million a year. I, the and, then, were, and then you're only 30. Dodgers were crazy for offering him that. I still don't think it's real. Okay, well... I don't Who know confirmed what, that? I don't know what to tell you. What are you going to keep asking the same question over and over again? Well, I want to know. It wasn't Dan Clark, so it was legit. No, no it one was, confirmed it. It, it was just sources said. It wasn't It wasn't fans with sources. These are legitimate people. Uh, how many legitimate people came out and said where Machado was headed? I want to know who confirmed it. Did the Dodgers ever confirm it? No, t- nobody ever confirms that from a team. Like a team doesn't come out and say, yeah, we offered this guy this. It makes know. them look stupid. There's no way Harper they put forty ever plus million dollars down. on a year. Well, he did. Then at age thirty, he would have had what already a hundred and seventy something million guaranteed. One hundred and sixty eight hundred. Yeah, okay. Okay, and is, then is at he, age thirty, he could sign a six year deal totaling how much? You I think mean, he's going to get another one hundred and thirty, a hundred and sixty million dollars at that point? Yes. Really? Yeah. At thirty. At least, yeah. Mm, I don't know Trust about me. that. Trust me. Believe me. No, I'm, I'm not going to believe you. Trust me. Trust me, bro. These guys see how the market is. Now you're going to tell me a 30-year-old Bryce Harper is going to get 160 million But you know what? That You're right. That's what, com- that's what it all comes down to. And I said it last week. These guys are petrified to hit free agency. And I don't blame them. But you know what? Screw the screw the players now. If there like I said, is there if there is even a whisper of a strike in two years from now, I might not watch baseball. I might strike. I might strike. Okay. As a fan. Okay. Okay? Because screw you. I'm gonna try and stay away from the F word here because we've dropped it a few times already. You dropped it. So did you. No. Okay. Why does no one believe me on this show? Because now, here's where I'm going to do it. Right here, I'm going to edit in when you just said the F word already. Okay. Okay? And if I didn't say, you owe me $500. Okay. And if you did say, you owe me 1000 No. Like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a fucking douchebag. Fucking douchebag. Fucking douchebag. I will apologize next week. No. Nope, that's not good enough for me. I want an apology, and then I also want an apology on Twitter, public, okay. I, and and not in a tweet. I want you to type it or write it in a notepad 
on your phone and then post it's, why do you think the it's screenshot be, of it because I want it to be at least at least five to six sentences it's not about be, how you doubt me and how you're wrong it's gonna be two words I'm sorry mm. well trust me you did okay. anyway uh I don't even know what I was saying anymore oh yeah these jerk off players right oh they don't give me my money and then now it's what I get my money but it takes too long well maybe don't be so f- so greedy maybe don't be so greedy why is it always that the players deserve this and that why don't the owners deserve a little a little uh a little bit of like a give and take thing from the players at this point why don't the owners deserve any of that like look we don't want to spend this kind of money anymore but you know let's turn the market over you you getting xyz contract is gonna be a you know, a big contract. Well, you know what? You don't make me take the side of the owners here, but these guys are making more money than they've ever made in their lives, and they're paying their players less. And they're f- and they're complaining about it, though. Who's complaining about it? The players. Yeah, because the owners are making more money, and they're not passing it on to the players. Hold on a second. Hold on. Here we Hold go. Hold on. Hold on. You got jerk off number one. Right, making three hundred million dollars over ten years, and then you got. Jerk off number two making 330 over 13 years. Yep. You're telling me these owners aren't paying their players? You got Aaron Hicks making 70 million. Aaron Hicks, 70 million guaranteed. First of all, we're going to get into that in a few minutes. Come on, man. Yeah, come on. You can't man. tell me that the owners aren't passing the money along. They're, they're just not- getting smarter about how they spend their money. Okay. Maybe that's why they have, maybe that's why they're making more money at this point. Maybe. No? <laughs> right? I- get a little smarter. You'll make a little more money. I agree. I think the owners are being smarter with their money, but that's the way the players feel. I didn't say that. I'm- well, get over it then. Get, seriously, get over it. All right. So Part of the business is that you need to adapt, right? These owners are getting smarter. That's why they're making more money. You're the reason why your your boss makes money, correct? Yeah. He makes more of it now. You don't get more of it. They're finding what they're trying to find ways to pay you less. Actually, how would you feel about that? No, that's. I'm sorry. That's ridiculous. That's not. That's not what is happening. That is what's happening. How? You have all these guys that are taking uh, forever and a day to sign now. Who cares? They're still getting paid. You know what Mark Teixeira said the other day? What? Really? You're no, really. Have, I want to know what because he's the most vocal out of all of them. He said that he signed two days before Christmas, and he thought that took a long time. That that he thought he was signing late. But what? Hold on a second. Now wait. Now wait. A minute. Now he's saying like he could never imagine signing. In March, because he thought that he, when he signed with the Yankees two days before Christmas, that was forever. And why did it take so long for these guys to get signed? Why? If you really want to know why? Because they're asking for fair market value of themselves? Mm. Or because they're asking for an astronomical amount of money just because they're Bryce Harper and Manny Machado and they're young and they're the best in baseball? You know who's the only person who deserves $300 million? Literally, there's only one person right now, and that's Mike Trout. Sorry. He's the only one. He's the only one I could justify paying that much guaranteed money to. I don't know if he's going to get it, because he's going to be... How old is he going to be when he hits free agency? I don't know. How old is he now? Not that young. Oh, speaking of the devil, we just got a text from Stack Guy Rye. What does it say? It said, go, f- go screw yourself. I edited it, because we're not allowed to say the F word anymore on the show. I didn't say... F- I, you could say it as much as you want. Uh, I was, this would have been the part of the show where I asked, uh, it's that guy right to look up how old Mike Trout is. He's 27 right now. And so what? He'll be 28. He's a free agent after 2020. So yeah, no, he'll be 29 when he hits uh free agency. So he's a free agent after this year? After 2020. Two ah, more seasons. I didn't know that. I did not know that. So what are you going to give Bryce um, Mike Trout? He's going to get 10 years and $300 million at 29? I don't know about that. He's got to. How could you not want to lock that up for 10 years? He's going to be pushing 30. Who cares? We 40, s- you mean? No, oh, I, mean- I thought you meant when it's all said and done. Oh, honestly, I don't care. I'm giving him the money. I'm giving him 10 years. And you know what? I'm probably giving him $350 million. At 29? Yep. You want to mm-hmm. know why? Because he deserves it. 
He's a guy who actually deserves you the You've probably seen Mike Trout play like four times in his entire it career. It doesn't matter. You want to know why? Because he's a guy that you go on baseball reference and you look him up and he just blows you away every single year on a team that does absolutely nothing. For all Mike Trout cares, he could sit on his ass and do nothing because the Angels have never done anything to make him a champion. But you know what? You hear- Mike Trout is better than that. I want to hear what Trout did last I year. I do. I just want to know. Just tell me all of his numbers. Oh, he missed uh, 22 games. I believe he was injured for a little bit, right, with the thumb? I think so, yeah. In it's the beginning a- of the year. Uh, yeah. And this is still what he did last year. He had a 10.2 war. Okay. That's first. Uh-huh. Batted 312. 39 dingers in 140 games, mind you. He hit 39 home runs. <laughs> uh, his RBIs were down. He had 79. He still managed to steal 24 bases, which was the third most, uh, fourth most, I'm sorry. Still a high number for him, 24. He walked 122 times, which led the major leagues, okay? You want to hear what his on-base percentage was last year? 460. Uh, I was going to say 480. That's crazy, man. His OPS was 1088. That's just insane. Right. There's no denying. I think we all are in agreement that Mike Trout's the best base player in Major League Baseball. It's not but, even close. I mean, but at 29, are you going to give him a 10 year contract where he's going to yeah. get over 300 million dollars yes. a year? Yes. Because what's the honestly, honestly, if Bryce Harper is going to get 13 at age 26, you're going to tell me Mike Trout's not going to get 10. Yes, at I age understand. 29? The end of the contract is still the same age, right? That would still be the same age for both players. Yeah, but you're getting more of Harper's prime years. It, in my opinion, when you're Mike Trout, your prime lasts more than a, the the average player. I'm just saying, don't think it's and, such a and, foregone conclusion. And let me be honest about something. Bryce Harper does not blow my mind. Is he that good? Am I am I off base here? I don't know. He just, what is it about him that everyone goes crazy? I'm not saying he's not good, right? I'm not saying he's not a... He was on the, what was he, on the cover of Sports <coughs> Illustrated when he was 16? Yeah. So. But, I mean, my thing is, like, I'm not saying he's not a, even a great player. Yeah, sure. But, like, what is it that everyone's like, he's con- he could be considered one of the best in baseball. He's been hearing, he deserves 13 years. No, he's been he, hearing no about, he doesn't. He's been hearing about Bryce Harper since he was in high school. That's great. Why. But great. But how many baseball players do you hear about in high school that actually become stars in the major leagues? Not many. So that's what he carries with him. And that's what we were talking about last week. Why I thought that Harper, when you were arguing that Harper doesn't deserve more than Machado, and I told you why he would get more because he brings that star power. We that, actually, not to cut you off, but Stack Guy Ride just gave us a little breaking news. What's that? Adam Warren to the Padres. That's not breaking news. I heard about that earlier this afternoon. Really? Yeah. I didn't. I isolate myself. You know the term, do you live under a rock? You live under two rocks. Yes, especially during the week. I don't know. There was a little bit of a rumor rumbling that the Yankees would be interested if things still kept going towards the end of spring training and Adam Warren was out there, that they would be interested in a reunion, which would have been nice, but it's, yeah. not, it's not important. No, no. So now it's you, definitely not needed. It's uh, good for him. He's, I think he's getting $2.5 million. Yeah, him and uh, Manny Machado can be best friends now. I mean, if you're the if you're the Padres, though, and you just went all in on Manny Machado, you got to do something else. They should be getting Dallas Keuchel. What's gonna happen with Keuchel? Could uh, the Yankees swoop in? I was thinking about this earlier. I think today. the Astros are gonna get him. I was thinking about this earlier today because the people were bringing up should the Yankees go and sign in on a starter, and you're not gonna bring in Keuchel because that means somebody that you currently have would be bumped. I think a guy more along the lines of uh, why? Who's who is their rotation? Who? The Astros. I'm talking about the Yankees. Oh, oh, okay. Sorry. You're not going to bring in Dallas Keuchel at this point in the year because who are you going to bump from the rotation? So what do you think he's going to be? I think he goes back to the. I think he goes back to the Astros. Yeah, that's what I think. Because they need him. They really do. I mean, they have Verlander and Cole, which is a great one too. Uh, oh, jeez, didn't they? Who's their other? Who's their Verl- other? Star? I personally think Verlander. Did they is- sign Wade Miley? They did sign. Did Wade. they? Ugh. Let me look that up. I personally think that Justin Verlander, and you know what? Part of me hopes I'm wrong because 
I'm speaking, I'm taking my Yankee cap off here. I really respect Justin Verlander. I really love what he's done, yeah, especially the Astros over the last did couple sign of years. Wade Miley. So right now, <clears throat> Wade Miley is slotted in as Ugh. a three starter. That's disgusting. But anyway, back to back to what I was saying. I hope I'm wrong on this, to be honest, but I really think uh, Justin Verlander is going to fall off immensely this year. Uh, I think you're going to start to see his age finally creep in. You know who had a higher war than Bryce Harper in 2018? Um, It was a Yankee or no? Uh, Wade Miley had a higher war than Bryce Harper. Okay, then you know what? (laughs) You could take your war and you could literally wipe your ass with it because if that's the truth, then... It is the truth. Uh, Miley's war was 1.5. Harper's was 1.3. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Then that's okay. I'm thinking... uh, Who's had a really high war? Trout, you said, was like a 10-something? 10 10.2. 10. Okay. Now we're okay. I agree with that. Because Harper was a bag of shit last year. He really was. He came He came through towards the end of the year. Yeah, I mean, he still hit 34 home runs and drove in 100 runs. Which is really Nash- impressive. And he led the National League in walks. Which is really impressive because he was abysmal in the beginning of the year. This is why I wanted him, though. Look, these are... I know, he's got a high on-base percentage. On, his career on base is 388. Yeah, I was going to say, it's like right near 400. He doesn't strike out a lot, does he? Or maybe he does, but he walks. Last year, uh, he walks a lot. Last year, he struck out 169 times, which was a career high by over 38. 38. <laughs> and the Yankees, that's normal. Oh, he wouldn't even be in the top three. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, having that high of a strikeout rate is normal. He hasn't even touched it until last year. I mean, but his swing in Yankee Stadium would be disgusting. Yeah, it would be. I'm not, look, I'm not sitting here and saying that Harper sucks and he doesn't deserve a big contract. I just don't understand the the crazy amount of hype surrounding this but, guy. Yeah, but here, again, though, we gotta, you got to look at it fairly. Uh, would Harper, as a Yankee, with that on-base percentage, that power, you know, it, it would look, being left-handed, it would look sexy in that lineup. But look at it realistically. He's only hit over... 274 twice in his career, okay? He's only driven in 100 runs once in his career, Last which, was, year. which was 2018. And he's only hit over 30 home runs twice in his career. Right. So, again, I mean, I just don't get it. But those on-base percentages are ridiculous. 340, 368, 344, 460, which is disgusting to get on base for. 46%, 46%. Of Listen, the time. It, it's 373, 413, and last year it was 393. It's impressive. It's insane. But is it $330 million, you know, if worth you of, at, a, of an on base percentage? If you just I mean, look at the on. numbers, no, he's not. No, no but honestly, They're though. They're buying if, the name. They're it, buying the name. But on, look at it. Look at it realistically, though. If you look at his average annual value, which is what, 24, 25, 25 million. and change, yeah. he's not worth that. No, he definitely is. He definitely is. Okay? That's not my issue. My issue is that why are the Phillies, right? The Harper comes in 330. Why are you not telling this guy to go screw himself? Because they want him. And now you're locked up for 13 years. All right, what's the over under before he gets traded? Six. It's got to be now six, six and a half. I'd put the over under. Look, and look, here's my thing with these types of contracts, right? He's going to get traded at some you point. You go back to A-Rod. You go back to Stanton, which didn't work out for them. You know, any of these big contracts, here's what I say. Is it obnoxious at the time? Maybe. But if you just win one World Series with that player, it's worth it. It's worth every penny. So you know what? The Phillies have to go out there and win a World Series. You know what? I was thinking about this today. Are the Phillies a real threat to win the World Series? And I don't think they are. No, I think if their pitching was better, maybe. Who do they have behind Aaron Nola? They have Arietta. Okay. Right. Cole Hamels. Is not with the Phillies. Uh, not Cole Hamels. Uh, come on. Who's the other guy? They don't have anybody. There's really... I mean, I, I heard the names. There's nobody that really... They have a couple young guys that really haven't done no, anything. there was someone else, though, that was like, eh, I forget... I don't know. I I just don't. Is their lineup scary? Well, like one through five, one of the best in baseball. One of the best in baseball. Because remember, they got JT Real Muto, right? 
They have Gene yeah, Segura. I think you forget about the fact that it's, it's people forget about the fact. Here's their starting rotation, right? Uh, Aaron Nola, who's one of the best in the baseball. Can you talk into your mic, please? We can't I hear you. I am talking into my mic. No, now you are. Uh, Jake Arrieta, who as a number two, I don't really like it. No, because he's shown that he's come Nick back to Nick Zach Eflin, and Vince Velasquez, who are older, younger guys that really haven't proven anything. Uh, it looks like David Robertson's going to be their closer. I mean, I mean, we love D Rob, but as a closer on a on a team that you might yeah, want to win a World I, listen. Series. But look at look look at we'll go around the horn with them. Ready, catcher JT JT Real Muto, one of the best in baseball. All right, some some Jagoffs think he's better than Gary Sanchez. Right. That's He's right. not, but All right. right. Reese Hoskins. Incredible. Uh, Hernandez plays second base. I don't know. I'll be honest. I don't know much about him. No, me neither. Uh, Gene Segura is their shortstop. Phen- phenomenal. Phenomenal. Uh, Mikel Franco at third. Great player. Mm-hmm. Kutch is in left field for them. Good, great pickup. Good move, but overpaid. Yeah, but you want to know something? Now you're putting a guy who gets on base a shit ton and you're all now you're complimenting him with another guy who gets on base o- an insane amount. Am I going to say his name correctly? Odubel Herrera, who's a good player. Was he the one that was like swinging with his ass out? Last yeah, I year? think so. And then uh, yes, and then Williams plays right field. Who again? I'm be honest, I don't really know much about him. Hey, that's a great that's a great lineup. That's a great National League lineup. They're going to be tough Nick to Williams, beat. Williams, 25 years old. Uh, but I mean, you know what? Let's go back to that real Last quick. Last year, 17 home runs, 50 RBIs, and, uh, and 400 plate appearances. Yeah, I don't really bad. give a shit about him anymore. Uh, let's just talk about the fact that they really don't have pitching. Um, I mean, what's what's his name? Aaron Nola? Aaron Nola. He's incredible, right? But other than his, that, I mean... don't even know his name. Whatever. Other than that, they really don't have pitching. They have D Rob as their closer, who just like you said, love the guy to death. But is that really your World Series uh, solution there? I don't know. And then you know you have a guy in Bryce Harper who is going to come into this clubhouse and think he runs the entire city. And to me, he's never really manifested a winning culture. I, I just wouldn't put all my chips. On the Phillies this year, to be honest, you want to ask me who the best team in the NL East is, it's still the Braves to me. You know what? You can say whatever you want about Bryce Harper. The fact is they had some really good Washington national teams. They were in the playoffs almost every year. They They never never won won a a series. Never won a single series. So so. what kind of a leader is he? And I'm not saying he can't be a great one. I'm I'm not saying it's Bryce Harper's fault that... The Nationals couldn't win a series when he was there, but it's definitely something worth questioning because, I mean, a true leader to me knows how to how to create a winning culture just by the way he gets the best out of the guys in the clubhouse. And now he's coming in this punk who we know he's a punk, right? He's he's he has matured a lot over the last couple of years. I, I I in all in all honesty, I. I definitely tolerated Bryce Harper more. You uh, you don't know that because you probably watched like eight Bryce Harper games in your lifetime. No, that's not true. I follow Harper closely. I, I, I do. Um, like you stalk him? Yeah, we're actually buddies. Uh, but honestly, like he comes into this clubhouse now and he walks in with his 13-year, $330 million contract. I don't know. I just don't think he's the guy you want leading that team. Or maybe you do, uh, you know. Clearly the Phillies do. Or else Clearly the Phillies do. Well, what did their owner say in the beginning of the year? The GM, whatever it was. The owner. It was the, the owner. He said, we're going to spend obnoxious money. There you go. Stupid money was Stupid the- money. You want to look up stupid money in the dictionary? The Phillies are all over it. And you know what? Good for them. But you better win a World Series. And I really hope it's not at the expense of the New York Yankees. Well, you know, the Yankees... Uh Handed out their own long-term contract on Monday. Uh, let's uh, transition here and talk a little Yankee baseball. We spent 40 minutes talking about the goddamn Phillies. Yeah, I mean, well, what the hell are we going to talk about? we got to talk about topical things. There's not much topical in the Yankee universe right now. Well, uh, let's. we got to bring up the one piece of news, and that's Aaron Hicks got a seven-year, $70 million extension from the Yankees, which when I first saw the tweet on Monday morning, I thought it was a fake I don't know why. Like, I looked at it real quick. I was on Twitter, and I, Jack Curry was the one that broke it. And I looked at it, and I was like, that's not real. 
And then I saw it was from Jack Curry, and I was like, ah, okay. Maybe he got the wrong scoop. No, because Curry got beat by a fake account one time. Did he? Yeah. Well, do you think this is going to become like, I'm glad you actually brought this up because I wanted to say this. Do you think this is going to become the new trend in baseball? Like, okay, you know what? You want a certain amount of money? That's fine, but we're not going to give it to you in four years. We're going to give it to you in seven. And like, maybe the teams are just like, screw it. It doesn't matter because we can trade these guys anyway. And teams actually like the fact that they can get him for with some control with the Yankees eating some of that money. Look, if you went on social media in the past week and complained about the Yankees signing Aaron Hicks to this deal, you know absolutely nothing about baseball and you're just complaining to complain about things. Well, that's usually the complainers are the ones who just don't really have a grasp at you know, what's going on at this point. Because in the grand scheme of things, right? What's, this is a great, what's $10 million a year this to is the a Yankees? This is a great deal for the Yankees. Do you know what's not a good deal? $40 million a year or whatever the hell that douchebag got. What did he get, $22 million a year? Oh. Ellsbury? Listen, what did he end up getting? Every, this, I, I don't know, he got 21 and change or something. Right. All right, anyway, right, everybody that likes to bring up war is like the, the holy Bible of baseball stats now, right? Yes. Of why one player is better than another, which yeah. we reference on here from time to time. And I like the stat. I don't think it's the end-all, be-all, though. No, and we gave our reasonings why a few weeks ago. And for everybody that says that the Yankees shouldn't have signed Hicks and they should have went after Bryce Harper, Harper's war last year was 1.3. You want to know what Hicks' war was? Uh, take a guess. Just take four, a guess. 4.6. Very close. You almost hit it on the head. Hicks' war last year was 4.7. Really? Yeah. It's pretty good. I don't even know what the hell war means, to be honest. When's I know what it actually means, you douche. Watch your fucking mouth. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. There's another one. There's number two. Okay. Find number one. Okay. It's done already. You owe me $500. I don't owe you nothing. Trust me. Trust me. Anyway, so I love people that were bringing up war as a reason why player A is better than player yeah. B. And then you're com- then the same people turn around and Well, he just about- had a down year, you know? Harper just had a down year, man. What's the big knock on Aaron Hicks? Uh, I don't know. Uh, big knock on Aaron Hicks is that he doesn't stay healthy. Exactly. That's it. Stop talking right there. Mm. He doesn't stay healthy. He could be a better contact hitter. Shut up. We're, but okay, he doesn't stay healthy. He doesn't stay healthy. So is last year now the benchmark for games that he will play in a season, or is that the outlier where he? Well, how just, many games did he play? One hundred and thirty-five. One hundred and thirty-seven games. Okay. That's, uh, no, it's got to be better. It, it doesn't. Ha- no, I don't think it has to be better. I want at least 145 games out of Aaron Hicks. Mm, I do. I, would take- I, I do. As a starting center fielder, as someone who mans the outfield, someone who's young and now getting seven years, you better give me more than 137 games a season. Yeah, but if he gives you 100, what if he if he gives you 140? That's pretty good. Okay, I'll take 140. He gives you 140 games. 145, I will be excited. with the Because you, you know Boone's going to want to rotate guys in and out. The thing that with him, though, the Yankees don't, unless you're going to tell me Gardner is going to play 20 games in center field, they don't really have a guy to step in and play center field. How many games you is have Gardner guy- going to play anywhere? No, he's going to play. I bet you he plays 100 games this year, at least. That is that is honestly... That's a lot for me. It's not, and I'm going to tell you why it's not. After because he's going done. to fill in for every outfielder that gets hurt or needs time. Are you done? Right? Are you done? Right? After we're done talking about Aaron Hicks, we'll bring up okay. what, what the ma- okay. what the manager said earlier this week. Okay. Because you live under a rock. Okay. You do a podcast about the Yankees, but you don't follow the team at all. You I get told all you, your you're supposed to be the intellectual one. You you're get supposed all to be your the one news who from throws me. all the facts out, and I'm supposed to be the one who sits here and says, fuck Bryce Harper, things like that. Okay. okay? And you're the one who's supposed to be like... But, bro, you got to look at the stats, and you got to look at this, and Hal said this, and Brian Cashman did this. All right, so look at look at it realistically for everybody that doesn't like the Aaron Hicks contract. Okay. Okay, right? Ready? All right, his big knock is that he doesn't stay healthy. But if now we're at a benchmark where he's going to play 135 to 145 games every year, that's not worth $10 million a year? I think it is. I think it is. All right. 
So now you're looking at a guy. How many home runs did he hit last year? He had 27 home runs last year. Okay. 27 home runs. That's actually really good. And how many did Bryce Harper have last year? 34? Yeah. Hicksie drove in 79 runs, primarily out of the leadoff spot. Right? Which is pretty impressive. He scored 90 runs. Right? Did he score 90? I think he scored 90. Did he? This is so much easier when we have Ryan here to look this stuff up. Well, if he didn't get sick. Well, if you didn't have a dumpster for his son. I'm calling the CPA on you. You're going to call Can I put a restraining order on you? You're going to call an accountant? What's he going to do? Can I put a restraining order on you, but only as friends? Like, in a business setting, you're allowed to be near me, but in a personal setting, no. I have a restraining order on you? No, it would it would have to be for both. Okay, so we'll, you can do the pod remotely. I thought he scored, I think he scored 90 runs last year. You're, but, I could get this in two, you say, you know, you, you talk a lot of shit, right? That I'm stupid and that I don't know this. You are dumb. I could literally get his stats and tell you in three seconds. Yeah, but I thought that would have been, oh, here, yeah, he did score 90 runs. I thought that would have been something that would have been right there on uh, baseball reference. He scored 90 runs, which maybe you want to see him score 100, but still 90 is pretty good. Um... Bada bing, right here, done, 90 runs. I just said that. 119 hits. What do we always say about on-base percentage? That it's got to be at least, what, 100 points higher than your batting average? Yeah, and his was almost 120. 366 for a guy like Aaron Hicks is actually a very good on-base percentage. It really is, and he's got a high slugging percentage, too. The last two years... Here's his last two years slugging percentage. 2017, 475. 2018, 467. That's pretty good for Aaron Hicks. And I'm not the biggest Hicks fan, but last year I think he played better defense than he had in 2017. No, we had it out for Hicks for a while. He's st- he still got one of the best arms in Major League Baseball coming from a center fielder. So what do you want for $10 million a year? This is a great deal for the Yankees. And if... You get bored of him or Florio comes up and becomes a star and Frazier's a star and or maybe you want to go get Mike Trout. You can't move Aaron Hicks at $10 million a year. Right. That's what I just was just saying. Like you can. It's a it's still sexy to other teams. And this is a guy. If and, anything, it makes him even sexier right, at that point. So Hicks would have been a free agent at the end of this year. What I thought was that maybe this was a little low for him because you think maybe he could have beat seventy million dollars on the open market. Maybe, bro. That's what I was kind of just saying to you, right? Is this the new trend? These players, these agents, they say, you know what? I want to get locked up, right? I want to get locked up, so I'm gonna throw out. X amount of money that I want to make and the team could tell me how many years they want to do it over. And I don't care if it's longer and I get a, you know, less of a salary average per year. Fine. I don't care. All I'm coming into at the table with is this end number, right? That's pretty much what Bryce Harper did. He didn't care if the Phillies did it over friggin' 20 years, I right? Think at that point, he would have said no. Why? Because at 13 years, he's done. He's worthless at that point. You give him 20 years, that really devalues the contract. You know what I'm saying, though, bro. It's the end result. So these players don't care anymore. That's why, you know what? You might start seeing more seven, 10-year deals that we thought we wouldn't see, but just at less and less per year. Would you ever think a guy like Aaron Hicks was going to get a seven-year deal from anyone? Honestly, I think seven, seven years is a is a respectable amount of uh, years to lock. And I a think guy that up allowed for. the Yankees to keep the annual value at ten million dollars a year. No they shit, would've, that's if, what I'm telling you though. But what I'm saying is, take the money out of the equation, right? No, completely. You can't take no, it no, out no. Of the I need you to. I'm talking on a theoretical s- uh, level here. Okay, would you ever think that you would read a headline that read Aaron Hicks seven year blah 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 deal? Ever. No, I still think seven years is probably a little bit too long, but it probably also, uh, you can't take the money out of the equation. No shit. And money is what part I'm saying of the is equation. When you throw money, this, it is so difficult to speak with you about certain things because you are so You're just literal. telling me to ignore You're facts. You're so literal, though. You're so literal that well, you can't think understand. that Aaron Hicks was ever going to get a seven-year deal. You want to honestly talk about like who's smart and who isn't? I'm trying to make a point, and because you can't jump out of your box that you're comfortable in of of 
realistic thoughts, you can't understand my oh, point. Oh, I don't want to live in the my fantasy point world. Is, my point is Aaron Hicks, even just five years ago, Aaron Hicks would never be a guy to get a seven-year deal. But now these guys are coming to the Aaron table. Aaron Hicks got traded for John listen, Ryan Murphy listen. even three years ago. <laughs> I mean, come on. Listen, these guys are approaching things a different way now. They're not coming to the table and saying, I want $30 million a year. Or I want $40 million a year. Or I want to get locked up for 10 years and blah, blah, blah. All they're doing is sitting down and saying, I want to get paid $70 million. They're saying, Aaron Hicks, how much do you think you should make over the course of your next, you know, whatever amount of years? How much would you be happy with? Oh, I need at least 70 million. Okay, that's it. I mean, that's it. Now the Yankees take it and they say, okay, Aaron, we'll give you your 70 million, but we want to do it over seven years. Guaranteed, guaranteed money. That's why I took it. Okay. Sounds good, guys. Probably win a couple World Series with you, too. I think I heard that Hicks had not even made $7 million in his career up to this point. And you know what? And now you're giving him a guarantee. Right. You're giving him guaranteed $70 million a year. Of course you're going to take it. It's a great move on both parts because it doesn't handcuff the Yankee. It doesn't necessarily mean Aaron Hicks is going to be here for seven years. Because like you said, that $10 million deal on a guy like Aaron Hicks, who's still young, starting to really produce, is going to be sexy. It's not going to turn people. It's not going to turn other teams away if, Aaron if Hicks, the Yankees are trying to shop him. If Aaron Hicks is going to play 135, 140 games a year, you're going to get 25, 30 home runs out of him. You're going to get... 90 to 100 runs out of him. You're right. going to get 80 to 90 RBIs out of him. You're going to get great defense out of him. He's undervalued at $10 million a year. Uh, Yeah, maybe right now he is. But I think over the course of this, here's what I'll say. I think over the course of seven years, Aaron Hicks, whether it be all within one contract, um, all with one team, maybe with separate teams, it doesn't matter. I never see a scenario where Aaron Hicks makes more than $70 million over the next seven years of his life. I don't know about right? that. I really do. I what don't, if he had a monster year this year? You don't think he could have got... It wouldn't matter. It wouldn't he matter. Could've got five, he couldn't have got five for 70 on the open market? No, my God, no. Come on. Really? No way. I think, I think I, he would have been more than 100% capable of it. 100% now. I would think he would have been more than capable of it. No. I, Aaron Hicks is not a guy that... Ah, I don't think he you can't, give. He no, can't because give, Aaron Hicks isn't a guy you give a five-year contract to. He can't get $14 that, million dollars no, a year no. if he went out there. Maybe for three years. No, for five years. No, not for five years. Why? Because I'm telling you. Why is he going to take a three-year deal coming going into free agency? He's not going to do that. What would the difference be if he took a three-year deal at 14 or ten, or seven-year deal at 70? Honestly. There's a huge difference. But what I'm saying, what I'm about saying is you're agent. not seeing it. The way it really is. What? It's about the money. It's yeah. about the end number. But you are saying that he there was, was no okay. way that he would have ever made $70 million as a free agent. I'm no, I you. never said that. What did you say? What then? I said was, I don't see a scenario playing out anyway where Aaron Hicks over the next seven years total makes more than $70 million. Maybe not by, not a lot more. Right, but he so why made, not lock it up he and would guarantee have made, it? I think he would have made more. Why not lock it up and guarantee it, though, at that point, on a team that is on the rise? I, honestly. I have no problem with it. What are you telling me? Uh, uh, do you think Aaron Hicks thinks he's going to be making, he could have made $120 million if he didn't sign with them Maybe right now? Maybe 85 or 90. I think it was a realistic number, a number that he never imagined making in his entire life. And he's going to get to play with one team, hopefully, for him for the next seven years without ever having to worry about where he's going to find another job. And that's why he signed it. But to say that he would have never made more than $70 million in his career, All I think, I is said, a foolish. No, I never said that. You just don't listen to me. You listen to Repeat what you want to hear. Repeat what you said again. What I said was, I do not see a scenario ever playing out where over the next seven years, Aaron Hicks would have made more than $70 million anyway. Why is that his entire career? You just said, I said entire career. I said over the next seven years. That's pretty much his entire spend, career. If you're going to sign a piece of paper, right? Bird in the hands, we're two in the bush, right? If you're going to sign a piece of paper with the greatest franchise in the entire world that says, hey, we're going to guarantee you $70 million over the next seven years, or you can play the market and see what you do, you're going to sign that deal 100 out of 100 times. Aaron Hicks is going to be 37 at the end of this contract. He's got time left. I mean, what's he going to have left at that point? I 
I just plays more to my point that I don't think because when is this con if they didn't extend him right when would he have been a free agent after this season okay so what's a monster contract I mean what's a monster season for Aaron Hicks he stays healthy runs. and he plays 155 games 30 home runs 35 home runs now no you questioned me when I said he could hit 25 but I runs. said monster season if he has a monster season okay 35 home runs drives in 100 Okay. And it's, what does he bat? Well, he hit 248 last year. Right. So what does he bat? 270, 280. Okay. That's not a monster okay. year. No, it's a great year. It's a monster. Monster. For him, it is. Huge. Monstrous. I'm scared of it. From your leadoff guy? Yeah. It's, I'm scared of it. It's not a that. monster year? It is. It so is. now let me ask you, what's the deal he gets? Don't say, well, I don't know. Tell me. I think it starts at five for 70. And what does that turn, turn out to? $14 million a year. Okay, so he Starts makes there. seventy million, right? Five years. Yeah. How old is he at, at the end of that contract? Thirty-five years old. Okay, and then who signs him after that? Maybe somebody signs him after that. For how much? Maybe he gets a two for four. Maybe you hear that word? Maybe that keeps coming out of your mouth. You hear it? All the maybes. Maybe he gets two for maybe. fourteen. Maybe he gets two for twenty. Maybe, maybe he comes over here and beats the shit maybe. out of you. Maybe. So I don't have to do maybe. it. Maybe. Maybe or. Now you could say he definitely gets seventy million over seven years. He would have made more than seventy million dollars over the next seven years. Maybe. No, he would have. Maybe. Because yeah, he, will he stay healthy? Maybe. Well, that's the that's again that's the big thing about him. Will he even be playing in seven years from now? <laughs> Maybe. Right. So we'll see. Will you fall down the stairs? But if you're a guy recording? like Aaron Hicks, Maybe. are you taking that risk, or are you saying, "Holy shit"? I got a team. The Yankees, Even though I can't stay healthy, I got a team to guarantee me seventy million. The, Shit. The Yankees took the um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Risk factor? Question? The Yankees. I don't think I'm. More, this is what I'm trying to say. The Yankees gave him stability and finan- uh, financial stability that he didn't have. Yeah. So he's now you say some people are like well why don't you bet on yourself you have a big year you hit free agency you can make more money which is fine and probably true but he's got 70 million dollars in the bank now yeah and listen when you have two guys as big a fish as Bryce Harper and Manny Machado sitting around for this long people questioning if they were even going to get signed and you're a guy like Aaron Hicks who can't stay healthy again he just hasn't been able to fully stay healthy and put Together, I know he was great last year, but to really put together that monster year like we know he's capable of and just talked about, you know, you're not going to sit there and be like, you know, kind of cocky that you can do it and maybe you shouldn't lock yourself. No, this is a great deal for Aaron Hicks right now. And you know what, Hicks, I, I'm not big into these advanced metrics. I'm sure somebody can bring it up, but they have these uh these numbers that they can figure out like luck factor or whatever. Oh, my God. I noticed a lot of times last year, Hicks hit the ball hard, but it was right at somebody, and he made a lot of outs that way. We actually, if you go back and take the time to listen to some of our episodes from last season, I can't tell you how many times we, we've we talked about how unlucky Aaron Hicks was. So that 248 batting average isn't really as bad it as really It really translates closer to 255, 260, really, to be honest. So again, if you're going to have a guy... That gets on base 120 points higher than his batting average, comes close to hitting 30 home runs, comes close to driving in 90, scores 90. I mean, what else do you, you know, switch hitter, plays great defense, and you're paying the guy $10 million a year. There's nothing to be upset over that. And think about it. The Yankees, yeah, there's always the risk involved with Hicks and his health. But I think the Yankees are at a point now where they're like, okay, maybe all that's behind him. He played 133 games last year. And who gives a shit if it's not? Again, it's not like you're handcuffing yourselves like you did with Jacoby Ellsbury, where you're paying him double that, more than double that every year. It's $10 million a year. A team will eat that up in a heartbeat. A heartbeat. And some, and if the Yankees get tired of it in two or three years, somebody will take them. Look, if you told me it was seven years for $140 million, No. Right. Right. But it's seven years over $70 million. 
That's not a lot of money. This is a great deal the for the Yankees. Scheme. It's a great deal for both of them. And it, Hicks got the financial stability that he never had. The guy's got $70 million coming to him. Right? Who's going to say no to and that? The, and a guy like Hicks doesn't normally ever see this kind of financial stability from, from any team because of the fact that he's a liability. But you know what? The Yankees gave it to him because we all know how much of a, a Cashman guy Hicks is. And you know what? We saw why last year. Cashman's not been, he hasn't been wrong on that though. No, he hasn't. He maybe hasn't turned out to be a superstar that maybe Cashman thought he would be. He's, he's going to be there though. I don't know if he's going to be a superstar. I think he'll have a couple superstar seasons for the Yankees. Maybe. I think he really will. I think he really will. And I think last year was a nice step forward. You know who should be a superstar in the outfield for the Yankees? Na, 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 na. Well, he already is a superstar. Clint Frazier. I hope so, man. And this is what uh was alluding to earlier in the show is that Cash uh not Cashman, Boone said that he doesn't want uh Clint Frazier to go out there and worry about winning a spot on this team, that the Yankees want him to play baseball. Just worry about getting innings in, playing games, and you know, getting back into being a baseball player. Which how I read that is that he's not making this team out of spring training. And didn't we say that a million times already? The Yankees are going to want him to do those things. Why? Because they want him to prove to himself and to the team and to everyone else that he is fully healthy. These injuries, these concussions are not going to linger. They're not hovering above his head anymore. He needs to go out there and worry about baseball because he needs to prove that he could still play the game. And I don't mean... And uh, I don't mean talent wise. We all know he's talented. He needs to prove that he can still play the game and that he could still be a baseball player who can go out there 150 times a year and still be okay mentally. That, physically. That's why when you were saying how many games is Brett Gardner going to play? I think he plays 100 easily. I think he's going to play at least until Memorial Day before they even think about bringing Clint yeah. Frazier up here. So that's the first 60 games of the year. You know, think you can find another 40 games to play the rest of the year? Probably. Probably. Yeah, I guess you're right. Why do you hate Brett Gardner all of a no, sudden? No, no. I love Gardy, man. <laughs> I just said, though, I was always a fan of them re-signing him this year. I just don't want him to be my everyday left fielder anymore. Well, he's going to be at least for the... No, I think that's piss, piss poor. I really do. For the first half of the year. I think it's piss poor. And But in the same breath, like at the same time, is it really that bad? No. And it's you, really not. You can carry him as your nine hitter. Right. That's what I'm saying. And it's, he's it's still really going to play really good defense. Hey, but why not flirt with the fact that, like, why not, if you want to call Frazier, if, if Gardy's that bad, why not flirt with the idea of bringing Frazier up maybe a little earlier than you normally would have wanted to and DHing him and letting Stanton primarily play a little left field for a I while? I don't think the Yankees want to compromise their outfield defense. I And I don't blame them, you know, but I'm just saying... If if Gardner's that terrible and that, how bad do you think he's gonna be in the first two? Yeah, months Yeah, I know. Year? That's what I was saying though before. Like, it's not gonna be that bad. He can't be that bad. Maybe it'll be great. What if he's great? What if he's hitting three hundred at Memorial Day? Great, right? <laughs> you know, we like sit here like this guy has no hope. I love Gardy. I think Gardy. You know, I he used to be a guy I hated because he never stole. Like my big thing with Gardy was his speed, right? But he never utilized it on base. He's not. A, but you know what? He's a fast guy, but he's not a base stealer. But you know what? The Yankees aren't about stealing bases. They haven't been for a long time. It because goes against home runs. the analytics, though. But if you really talk to someone who is analytically in tune with baseball, they will tell you that the stolen base is the stupidest thing ever. The that is. you should not steal a base. It is. It equates to an out way more than it ever does helping. Uh, your offense. That's uh, not true. Yeah, no, it, it is true. Even a bad base stealer steals 80% of their bases. So how could that not equate to being, you just said it equates to being an out more than it does helping the team. That runner will equate to being an out more than it would be that he turns into a run. I don't know the fucking math, dude. You just made, okay? it just absolutely made no sense. Just, just you shut said. up and just trust me for once. No, because okay? it just made no sense. The analytics behind stealing a bag don't make sense to all the nerds that do all the math. Not because it equates Whatever, to an out. It's because then. the Whatever. risk 
of making the out. Holy shit. That's what I'm trying to say. No, you just did, you said something completely different. The risk is not worth the reward. To them, to the, to the baseball nerds, it's so not. So, the Yankees have the most baseball nerds out of all of them. That's why the Yankees don't steal bases The Yankees anymore. don't steal bases because they hit home runs more you than any. You this fucking show up, by the way. No, I don't want to. Jesus. Because they hit more home runs than anybody else. So, it's a risk to them to have runners thrown out when everybody that steps in a batter's box to... For them is already uh, a threat to go deep. Who's name one guy outside of Brett Gardner that's going to be in the starting nine that's not a threat to go deep for this team? Screw that! I think Gardner still is with being a lefty at at home. Yeah, but he had a down year, down power year last year, 2017. I would agree with you because he hit over 20 home runs that in 20. Uh, he had the highest slugging percentage of his career that year, I think. Um, who is not a threat? Man, maybe I don't know what kind of. Power guy DJ LeMayu is if he's in the rotation, but okay, maybe DJ is not a maybe. He's I don't not know though. Maybe guy. he is, you know. But Tulo's hitting the shit out of the ball down in spring training, so he's he maybe has some power if he's going to be in this lineup more than we expect. You know, Voight and Bird, Bird, you don't expect to even you know touch the baseball with his bat, but at the end of the day, he profiles as a power lefty. Voight, we know what he's capable of. Yeah, LeMayu's not a big power guy. He had a career high in home runs last year with 15. All right, that's still only, good, though. It was the only the second time <clears throat> in his career he hit double-digit home runs. That's still that's still respectable, though. It's not like he... Guess who else had a higher war than Bryce Harper last year? DJ LeMayu. DJ LeMayu did. He had a war of three. I bet you we can find a bunch of people who did. Bryce Harper's war was like 86th in baseball last year. Right. So... And he just got the craziest, dumbest deal in the world for both sides. Both dumb. Both dumb. Well, you brought up Troy uh, Tulowitzki. Uh, I like this about Troy Tulowitzki is that he hit a home run against the Blue Jays the other day in spring training. Not that that means anything, but he said it felt a little little good. A little. Well, like, he did, was screaming, fuck yeah, or something, coming around the bases. Like, uh, it felt a little... A little bit more rewarding than your regular run in the mill spring training home run because that was the team that told him he, he couldn't, couldn't play hit a baseball. home run anymore. He couldn't play baseball anymore. And I like him having that chip on his shoulder. He does have a chip. The only thing that you hope now at this point is that the Yankees find room for him um, because you don't want that to happen. And then, like, he's all confident and ready to go and he's feeling good. And then you're just like, hey, Troy, uh, see ya. Then he just looks like a douche. Where's he going? I don't know. Cut his ass. Why? Well, I'm saying... He's going to be a starting shortstop. You don't know that. Who's going to be the starting shortstop? I don't know. Torres? Uh, Troy Tulowitzki? Bro, do you go back? Like, do you even listen to what we talk about on the show? That, like, if Troy Tulowitzki isn't healthy or... But if, he is healthy. Right. Right now he so is. So if he is, then and he's he going to be... he absolutely better be the starting shortstop. Yeah. If he's hurt, then yeah, he's... Maybe he gets cut, but if he's healthy and he's hitting the t- cover off the ball in spring training, he's going to be the starting shortstop. Absolutely. Yeah, of course. I'm just saying, man, you you just don't pay attention to what we talk no, about. No, you show. don't pay attention to anything. That's what your problem is. You go too long now. You have you lost me. You were, you've been lost since we started hit record. Really nice. Don't you have something to read? Today? Nah. Actually, we do have to kick it... Uh, We'll kick it to our sponsors, and then we're going to come back and, and wrap up the show or no? Oh, you're not going to actually read anything? No. I'm just going to kick it to the sponsor. You'd rather listen to the lovely lady that reads the spot than, this, I would. than your stupid-ass voice? Yes. Okay. Okay. Hey, have you heard about baseballism? <laughs> A premium lifestyle apparel brand focusing on the class, tradition, and history of baseball. You can find everything from accessories such as phone cases and watches to your next favorite baseball tee. Whether you're a player or just a fan of the game, Baseballism has something for everyone. They also have multiple stores, including one in Cooperstown, home of the Baseball Hall of Fame. Hop online to Baseballism.com and check out all they have to offer. Just be sure to use promo code NYYST at checkout for 15% off your entire order. Baseballism, a brand built for love of the game. All 
right. Thank you to uh, our sponsors, baseballism.com. Uh, what's the code to say 15? M-Y-Y-S-T. It's not M-Y-Y-S-T 15? No. It's just M-Y-Y-S-T? Correct. And little something, little tidbit here. Little tidbit I'll throw out here. Yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, we are going to start as part of our... Um, contract with baseballism it's not just the show we're going to start doing some giveaways on twitter um first up we're going to be giving out some caps this month with the little baseball logo and did you know this their their logo the baseballism logo that is on every single one of these podcast shows you know on our cover art uh-huh do you know who they had to get like legal uh have a legal partnership with in order to use that logo probably reggie jackson the ruth family hmm Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Because it's Babe Ruth. That's their logo. You yeah. know that, right? Yeah. Where's my Babe Ruth t-shirt that I've been asking for? You want me to get you one? I. No. He said, look, that was going to be their first bit of giveaways for us, for us. But uh, CEO that I've been talking with, he said that the sizing right now they're trying to get down. So it might be difficult to use as giveaways. But I'll get you one. You want me to get you one? I get one. I don't want these these geeks on Twitter getting free shit. We should be getting free shit. Really, geeks? Hey, listen. I want to talk to you about this. We're gonna peel back the curtain a little bit here and talk live. We're gonna talk this through. We've talked about doing videos, right? Together. Sure. About like for the show. Uh huh. Right. I think it should happen at least once a month, maybe twice a month. That we should film and also audio record our show. I want to take calls. We could do that too. We can absolutely do that. I want to be like, somebody come on and be like, Hal is cheap. I'm like, get the fuck off the telephone. You could do that. You want me to do that? Yeah. I, I can do. set that shit up. Let's go. Okay. I need you to get closer to your mic when you talk to me. Okay. Now, we're going to do these videos, right? We're going to need some shit. We're going to need some baseball, baseballism stuff, right? We need to rock the baseballism gear. So I want a bunch of free shit, right? Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right, All right, that was our that was our thirty second ad for them. Okay, that was our thirty second ad roll for them. Just natural back and forth. Now you know baseballism dot com, right? You're definitely going there after this show, and you're going to use NYYST as your promo. All right, thank you for listening to episode one hundred and two of the NYY Sports Talk podcast. Uh, follow us on Twitter at NYY Sports Talk. Uh, I you know I get I always get thrown off when I can't. Go around the horn here. A go, Yangs. I kind of sound like him, so that sounded like him. All right, good enough. Chris! Say goodbye. Peace!